Hello everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. I know I have been away for so long, but for all of you um, that follow me on Instagram at the Plantastic Nerd, probably know the reason why I wanted to take a break from making videos and generally uh, social media. But with the current situation going on worldwide now, um, I found a lot of free time and I decided to come back and uh, start making videos again for you. And today's video is about uh, a terrarium. I am going to show you how to make your own DIY, DIY um, terrarium. There are two types of terrariums, ones that are open and ones that are enclosed. Um, I'm going to be making an enclosed one today. Uh, if you're interested um, about an open one, let me know down in the comment section below and maybe I will make another video about an open terrarium. But for today, I'm going to, make it, I'm going to be making uh, an enclosed one. The difference between those two is that the open terrarium uh, needs to be watered a lot more than the closed one because the water evaporates, uh, obviously, and uh, people use um, plants in an open terrarium that like drier conditions uh, opposing to the enclosed uh, terrarium where we are going to be using plants that uh, love high air, humidity and a lot of water surrounding them as well. So if you're interested in all of that, stay tuned, um, grab a snack and enjoy the video. So the first thing you're going to need is obviously um, a glass container. I had this one in hand and I didn't want to throw it away so I decided to go with it. As you can see I decorated the lid as well to make it look a bit better. And the plants that I'm going to use today uh, are a blue star fern. I love the blue tint this one has on its leaves. Um, the next one is going to be uh, a Tradescantia Zebrina and I also like the patterns and the coloration of the leaves and I uh, love the contrast between this one and the fern and the last but not least is going to be a Fetonia or else commonly known as the nerve plant as you can see by the looks of the, uh, of the plant's leaves it looks like it has nerves. What I also uh, picked up from my backyard is uh, some sticks, some pieces of wood with uh, a little bit of moss on them and um, I also picked up a few patches of actual moss that I found um, on the outside wall. I'm not sure what kind of moss this is but it's just like the most simple one that you can find anywhere. And the first step you want to do is rehydrate and reactivate the moss. So I filled up a container with some tap water and I throw them in for maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So the next step that you want to do is create a mesh that will separate your soil from your false bottom and the false bottom is where we will put our pebbles in so the water the excess water will be stored there and will be reused whenever the plants need it so in order to create the mesh um, i'm going to cut a piece of uh, plastic wrap and i'm going to line it up with the bottom of the uh, jar that i'm using here And then I'm going to poke some holes in it uh, because we do want some of the water, water to be able to come through but not uh, the soil. So once you're done with that, um, carefully cut it and make sure that it's, uh, it fits nicely into the jar. It should be a little bit bigger than the um, diameter of the bottom of the jar. And uh, we're going to first use these pebbles that I've got. They're just 
decorative white pebbles that I found from a store and uh, you want to fill it up around one third of the height that you want to use and then I'm going to add the mesh that I just created and I like to throw a couple of more a uh, couple more pebbles on top of it just to make sure that it's stable and it's not going to uh, move around too much when I add the soil to it. So the next step is obviously adding the soil and I have a mixture over here uh, that I created with some uh, extra perlite and um, orchid bark but you can pretty much use anything that you want unless you're using a very specific plants that need specific types of soil. So the first uh, plant that I'm going to put inside is this Phytonia. So as you can see it's pretty root bound and I want to tease the roots a little bit and give them some more room and space to breathe and remove some of the old soil. So I will be using um, the back of a spoon to make a little hole into the soil and uh, this is basically, there's no right or wrong way to do this, it's just uh, the way that you like it and uh, just make sure that you've covered up all of the root system into the soil so that the plants can have a better chance of surviving. So you can see here I'm also using a chopstick, I like it because it gives them some nice um, control. And you can see over here, this is how it looks so far. I'm gonna check up real quick on the wood uh, pieces because I want to landscape the terrarium a little bit with this piece over here. And it's been already 10 minutes, so I'm thinking it's going to be fine. And I will put it just right there and try to create this um, natural look of, uh, of maybe a forest or something like that. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to move on with the next plant, the uh, Torres Gandia Sabrina. And you can also see this is also root bound and I am going to have to remove all of the soil and I'm probably going to divide this plant because it's a little bit too big for me and uh, you can see over here I divided it and I am um, going to be using this one piece over here I find it quite nice and I'm also going to do the same uh, thing that I've done with Petonia over there just making a nice little hole for the roots to go in and then make sure to cover it up pretty good And last but not least, I want to add this blue star fern to it. Let's pop it out and do the exact same thing that I did with the rest of the plants. This one is not as root bound, but I realize I don't have not enough space to put it a hole inside, so I'm going to divide it as well. And I will be doing the exact same thing as I did before. You can see over here that I'm using my chopstick because I like the control that I have using a chopstick. And you're about to see over here that I remove <laughs> two of the plants because I don't like how they uh, look like. And that's perfectly fine, you guys. This is um, a process and you can do it and redo it as many times as you want. Uh, just to make sure that it looks nice because once you're done with it It's pretty much going to look like that the whole time So you might as well just make it the way that you like it So adding up some more decor some more finishing touches and uh, I want to add this to the uh, very edge of the Glass container so that I can see it and then I will add the piece uh, of um, Tradescantia that I removed 
and this is a brief look of how it uh, looks right now so the very last thing that i am going to add is the pieces of rehydrated moss and it might not look like much right now but as soon as this takes to the ground and starts rooting it's going to um, start growing like a, like a complete weed so i'm very excited to see how this turns out so when you're done and you know that uh, your terrarium um, is going to look like this and you don't have to reposition anything you're going to have to water it and i'm going to be using distilled water or you can also use filtered water because in a terrarium you don't want any minerals in the water because they're going to be concentrated in the long run and I'm going to be using this spray bottle to try to also clean up the leaves as well and then uh, once I am done with that I'm going to clean up the um, surface of the glass with some wet piece of um, cloth and for the outside I'm going to be using some microfiber cloth to make it look nice and clean and neat. So here's the end result of the terrarium. Um, I really love the idea of having plants in a terrarium because uh, it gives you the feeling that you have a little piece of forest in your home and uh, it actually also smells like a forest when you open it up after a couple of hours. And um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty happy about it and I'm hoping that this uh, goes out really nicely. So that's pretty much how you can make your own DIY enclosed terrarium. I'm going to link uh, down in the description box um, an account, a YouTube channel that has helped me a lot um, in order to find out what's the best way to make an enclosed terrarium. So if you're interested, you can check that uh, channel as well. Um, again, I want to say a huge thank you for all of you that stayed around and um, yeah, watched my my whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up and if you want to see more content from me, leave a subscription and hit that notification bell so you uh, will be notified whenever I post a video. Feel free to follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I am a lot more active there and I post a lot of uh, other stuff as well. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please stay home and stay safe. I will see you guys next time. Until then, have a fantastic day.